These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos by going to my website. There's a link to the website in the info box. Uh, here's the address of my website, uh, www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm. That address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm. Uh, or you can just use the link in the info box. Uh, I'll also mention that I offer tutoring uh, via Skype, um, and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service also at this website. And again, there's a link to that site in the info box. Thank you. Okay, so the problem says to show all the possible stereoisomers. Uh, okay. So, uh, well, uh, what would happen first, Jay, do you think? Um, well, also, in, in the assignment, he said that there would be the NMR hint means that there's no carbonyls in the problem. Right, so we know we're going to show all the stereoisomers, and we don't expect to get, uh, and the problem tells us we're not going to get any carbonyls? Right. Okay. So, the first thing I thought to do was have ET minus attack the carbonyl carbon. Okay, good. So, we know that we should treat a green yard just like ET minus, so this would come in here, so then we is going to attack the carbonyl, and then it's not going to attack um, this uh, ketel group here. That does not adult plus. In fact, it does, doesn't it? Because uh, these are electronegatives, so this would have a delta plus. So how do we know it's not going to attack here? I think maybe we talked about this last time. So this is a ketel. Remember that ketals and acetals are unreactive with nucleophiles and bases? I think we talked about that when we were talking about protecting groups. So. Oh, yeah, sorry, I might not be... We were just talking about protecting groups, so yeah. Yeah, so, um, okay, so, uh, yeah, so if you weren't here, that's a very important idea to have uh, in your notes. So this is a ketal. Ketals are unreactive with nucleophiles and bases. That's why this is a protecting group. This is protected from reacting with nucleophiles and bases. Well, this is a nucleophile, um, so it's not going to react I'm, with this. Sorry, mm -hmm. my pencil went out. Could you right. say it again? Ketals sure. are... So we would say that... Uh, Acetals and ketals are unreactive, don't react with, are unreactive with nucleophiles and base. Okay. Acetals and ketals don't react with nucleophile and base. All right, and that's actually a very important idea. That's the reason why these can be used as a protecting group against nucleophile and base. Okay? All right. So, uh, as an aside, that's how we know that this is an attack of carbonyl and not um, this hidden carbonyl over here. All right. So, uh, let's see. Um, all right. Did you have an opinion about what would happen next? Um, well, okay. So, H3O plus can protonate the O minus, right? That's right. So we should definitely, uh, so now we're ready to go on to our step two. Now, one thing you should worry about is you should ask, is this oxygen going to attack this carbon over here? After all, this is a nucleophile. You should worry about whether it's going to attack this carbon, but we know it won't because we just said this is protected from nucleophiles. So this oxygen can't attack this carbon yet because this is protected from nucleophiles. So we're ready for step two, which is protonation. Okay, so uh, that'll give us that next step. else to say? Well, anything else that's going to happen? Okay, so this is like the concept I'm sort of trying to get that that that, that, that ketal decomposes in the presence of an acid, right? That's right. So does that mean that it's just going to get protonated by that acid? That's right. So let's go through the steps for that. So 
Uh, basically, this is what we would call a hidden carbonyl, right? A hidden carbonyl. How can you recognize a hidden carbonyl? It's a carbon with two bonds to um, electronegative atoms. A carbon with two bonds to electronegative atoms. Well, here we have a carbon with two bonds to oxygens. So anytime you have a carbon with two bonds to electronegative atoms, that's a hidden carbonyl. So actually, um, all right, so we know that uh, this is our type of a hidden carbonyl. And how do we reveal hidden carbonyls? So you go backwards. So with H3O plus, you yeah. get an acid. Water plus acid. Water plus acid is the way that we would reveal it. H3O plus. Yeah, that's right. So you can say water plus acid or H2O plus, those are the same thing. Um, and we know that that is going to reveal the hidden carb uh, vanille. Now there's a huge long mechanism that that goes through. But since this is not a mechanism problem, we'd be best off. Peterson does it too. He just cuts those, the bond between the I's and that nose. Oh, we don't have to know the mechanism? Uh, you should know the mechanism. However, um, you wouldn't want to actually draw the mechanism, maybe unless it was a mechanism problem, because it's, it's quite um, long. Basically, it's just the reverse of... Um, so we, we know, I, I think in the past, we've gone over the mechanism for when uh, alcohols uh, attack a uh, carbonyls with acid. Acid-catalyzed alcohol attack on carbonyls. We saw there was a, a huge, long mechanism. Uh, acid-catalyzed alcohol attack on carbonyls. And we also talked about the reverse reaction. I don't remember if you were around when we talked about that, but we also went through the reverse reaction uh, a little bit uh, on that. Pardon? So um, anyway, that's just, uh, so yeah, you should know that mechanism. If you want to, we can do that mechanism. Maybe we should do that after we finish the main problem here um, because you wouldn't want to actually go through the whole mechanism here. What you should just say to yourself is, aha, this is a hidden carbonyl, and the way you reveal hidden carbonyls is acid plus water. And then you can simply, um, replace uh, and just you just turn that hidden carbonyl carbon into a carbonyl. Okay. So it would be good to know the mechanism for this, but um, in, a, in a longer problem, it would take too long to show every single mechanism. So you should also be able to just put in this carbonyl here. So he said that there's no carbonyls in this product, so therefore, can we ignore that H and then have an O minus there to attack? Because what else will it now attack? Right. Yes, yeah, so that's a good point. So the problem told us there will be no carbonyls in the final product. That means we're not done yet. So everything we've written down is correct. Everything we've said is correct. But we're not done yet. More stuff has to happen. So we're ready to keep going. Okay. Well, remember, we've still got um, acid. We still have acid. Is there anybody around here that this acid would like to protonate? Carbonyl. It would like to protonate this carbonyl oxygen. And now this is quite electrophilic. Are there any nucleophiles attack, uh, around that could attack that carbonyl? Any nucleophiles around that can attack our carbonyl carbon now? We wouldn't use ET minus again, right? Because you would have to say two ET minuses. The reason we wouldn't use this again is because this was a separate step. Mm -hmm. Remember that when the steps are numbered, um, this was put in only after this was over. So you should assume that when you have a new numbered step, that um, you're not going to be able to use any more of the reagents from the first step. But so. didn't in that second step, it already protonate that O minus and also. Um, cause that protecting group to leave, so then how do we know that we can still use that H to react with that oxygen? Right, so it looks like he's expecting us to assume that we have excess, excess uh, the H3O+. Uh, okay. plus. Very uh, um, oftentimes when things are put next to arrows, they're not careful with the numbers. Um, also, remember that when we were revealing this hidden carbonyl, that was acid catalyzed, so that didn't actually use up any acid. Um, when you reveal the hidden carbonyl, that's just acid catalyzed. I guess we did use up um, one proton when we protonated this oxygen over here, though. So we do, um, we are expected to assume here that we have excess H2O plus. Okay, uh, and so that means uh, this is going to want to keep protonating as many people as it can. So it's going to protonate this. And now that this is a good electrophile, the question is, are there any nucleophilic atoms around? Yeah, this is a nucleophilic atom. A neutral oxygen is not a great nucleophile, but that's okay because this is a good electrophile because we protonated over it. In fact, we should recognize this is one of the common patterns we've seen. What, uh, what, what's, what's the name of this functional group? Hydroxyl. What type of functional group is that, though? Is that ketone or aldehyde or what? Or, no, is too forward. It's an alcohol, right? Ah, this is an alcohol. Why is that important? Because we've learned a key reaction uh, when we have an acid-catalyzed attack of an alcohol on a carbonyl. That's the reaction we were talking about a second ago. Acid-catalyzed attack of alcohols on carbonyls. That's one of the, the key reactions we've gone through. Um, well, that's exactly what we have in this case. Here we have an alcohol, and here we have a carbonyl, and here we have the acid. So we're going to have... Mm -hmm. 
Um, so we do need to put Oh, I'm sorry, I was just backing up for a second to, to show um, oh. how to think about this. Okay. So at this point, we should say to ourselves, aha, uh -huh, we've got a carbonyl, we've got an alcohol, and we've got acid. And we should just think of this as our standard um, acid-catalyzed attack of an alcohol on a carbonyl. And then we just go through the steps for that. 